When performing a test manually, it's important to note that all the information should be written down in case something doesn't get entered properly into the software program or, for instance, something might crash or your computer might go down. Anything like that could happen while you're trying to enter your data and if you don't have it written down then you won't have a hard copy and there have been many sets of data lost because of this oversight. So we, we definitely recommend that you write down all the information on a test form which could look something like this for example. So all the data is written on this sheet and then afterwards you can come back to Fantastic and write in all the information. One of the first things that we must do is select the correct fan. If you see here number one fan and you push this drop down box you'll see all the fans that are available to be used in Fantastic. You'll notice that all of the f all of the RetroTech fans are available, including older models and the duct testers, and Minneapolis fans as well, including their duct blaster and their TrueFlow grid and exhaust fan. Now, it's very very important. We can't stress this enough. It's very important that the correct fan is selected and the correct range is selected. And we'll get into ranges in a few minutes. But the reason this is very important is because Fantastic has flow curves that it uses for each fan and for each range individually in order to calculate all of the results and to cal calculate the corrected flows that make up the results. So if you have the wrong fan selected or the wrong range and you enter the data that you had taken in the field um, on a different fan or a different range, then there, all the results that you'll get will be incorrect or inaccurate. So we want to make sure that we have the fan selected for the fan that you were using in the field as well as the range selected for what the one that you were using in the field. And I'll show you pictures of that in just a minute. So we've already entered the building information, including the elevation above sea level, the height of the building, enclosure volume, floor area, and enclosure area. And now we want to select the time that we started the test, so we can enter, enter that in manually. Let's say we started an hour earlier. So 1436. And when we were doing the test, we were inside the building. Now, whether the set is a pressurization set or a depressurization set will depend on whether or not the operator is located inside or outside the building, as well as the sign of the building gauge pressure point. So for instance, if the building gauge pressure is a positive number, then we have pressurized. If the building gauge is a negative number, you'll notice it switches immediately to depressurization set. So let's say we have actually done a pressurization test. So we're going to want to write down the wind speed and the wind speed has to do with um, one of the deviation statements for ASTM. If it's above four miles per hour the test is no longer valid. So let's say it's one mile per hour coming from the west. Now we can enter our initial indoor and outdoor temperature. Let's say We'll keep it like this, 68 degrees inside and 55 degrees outside. And after the test, we found that it was 68, let's say 65 inside, and it remained 55 outside. Now this is the location where we'll enter our bias pressures. And to take a bias pressure when you're in the field, you can either use the baseline feature on our gauge, or you can set the gauge up to read a time average of approximately 20 seconds and all you have to do for that is to push the button that says time av AVG and that's number five and the more you push it the higher the time average is going to go so we've got one second two seconds eight ten 20 seconds and then it goes up to one minute. So if it's very windy we recommend taking longer bias pressures. If it's not so windy then you can get away with taking a bias pressure of 10 seconds which is what ASTM recommends. However we do recommend taking a, a slightly longer bias pressure. So if you set your gauge up to read a time average of 20 seconds then you have to wait at least 20 seconds before taking the reading down. So let's say we've we did that in the field, and we read a bias pressure 
of 0 0.5. And ASTM only requires that you take one bias pressure reading. So ASTM also requires that you take readings from between 10 and 60 pascals, and anywhere between 5 readings and 12, as you can see there are 12 spaces here. So if you hover over each cell, you'll notice that it is set up to take a pressure of 10, second, 10 pascals, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. So although ASTM suggests that the building pressures are taken from 10 pascals to 60 pascals, we recommend that they be taken from 15 to 60 or even from 20 to 60 instead. However, this is up to the tester and to follow ASTM protocol we would start at 10. So that's what we have done with this test. And we'll put in here the time per building pressure. So if you've set your gauge up to read at a 20 second time average, then we have taken building pressures for 20 seconds. And we did the same thing for the bias pressures. And it is required for ASTM that the time per building pressure and per bias pressure be taken for greater than 10 seconds each. So we have succeeded in passing that state, the deviation statement. Now one thing that we have to be really clear about, and I mentioned this earlier, is selecting the correct range. The range is very important because it controls what flow curve is going to be used to create or to compute the results for this test. So we want to make sure that we select the range that was actually being used in the field at the time. So for this test, we used range B. This is an example of all the ranges that we have. There are 11 for most retrotech fans. Now we'll enter the building pressures that we took on range B. And we will enter as well the final bias pressure. And now you see that immediately these gray cells beneath the pressures that we um, have recorded are calculated and the total corrected flow is calculated based on the flow curves for range B and for the Retrotech 2000 fan. So now if we push calculate we'll see all the results come through. So these are some of the results that you would see in the deviation statement for instance the height times temperature difference. This must be below 1180 and it's based on the temperature difference between indoors and outdoors and the height of the building above ground. In addition, we have the air leakage coefficient, the exponent, which must be between 0.5 and 1, and the correlation coefficient, which has to be greater than 98.5. And you can see that it's 99.9%, so it's quite a good correlation coefficient. Now these things make up the equation of the line that we can see in this graph. So the first graph on the top shows us the pressures that were taken over however many readings. So the first reading that we took was an initial bias pressure, and that was just above zero. And then we have our six building pressures that we took, up to 60 pascals. And then we have our final bias pressure. Now on the second graph, you'll see our flow on the y-axis, and on the x-axis we have the pressures. And this is a log scale graph, which is why the lines are not evenly distributed. And you'll also notice that this line runs through all these points, and this is the regression line. The 99%, or 0.9997, represents how closely this line matches or fits the data that it's running through. And this is an excellent regression. So that equation, the equation of the line that we just saw, is used to calculate all the results that we see here. And these, these are the results that you would share with your customers. So we have airflow at STP in CFM at 50 pascals an air change rate, so air changes per hour at 50 pascals, a flow per unit area, unit floor area, in CFM per square foot at 50, a flow per unit enclosure area in CFM per square foot at 50 as well, and then we have an equivalent leakage area in square inches at 10 pascals, and an effective leakage area in square inches at 4 pascals. Now you'll notice that we did not start the test at 4 pascals, and the reason that we can derive this um, result at 4 is because we use this equation to extrapolate back to 4 pascals. And we can do that to extrapolate forward as well. So if we wanted a CFM at 75, for instance, we could achieve that using the equation. 
So ASDM requires that you complete two tests, one in the pressurized direction and one in the depressurized direction. We can clear all the data in this test set, we can delete this test set, which we don't want to do, or we can add a new test set. So we're going to say new set, and yes, we want the set created based on the environmental parameters um, of the prior set, so we're going to say yes. And here there's a whole new test sheet. We have wind speed and direction is copied over from the first test. So are the temperatures. And so we'll leave them the way they are. And we're going to do a depressurization test because we had already done a pressurization one. So let's say we had a bias pressure of 0.6 during this test. And in this one, instead of being positive values, they're going to be negative because it was a depressurization test. Now, in this direction, we noticed when we were running the fan that we couldn't actually get an accurate pressure on the B range. We had to use the C8 range. So let's change the range to C8 and enter in the data that we collected. But let's say that uh, we decided that halfway through this, um, after 20 pascals, we wanted to switch up to the B range so that we can achieve 60 pascals easily. So we can't just enter data here and then change this range because that will change it for the entire line and then it will not be accurate. The corrections uh, for flow will not be accurate. So what we do is say new, add new fan pressure entry line. And so we're selecting the B range because this is where we took the next set of data. So you can do this as many times as necessary, but generally you shouldn't really have to change the ranges during a test. And if you do have to, you should only have to do it once. One good tip uh, when running um, a manual test is before you start testing, select a range, for instance B range, which is in the middle, and then set the fan up to go from to go up to 10 pascals and then up to 60 pascals and see if you can reach both ends of the range. If you can, then you won't have to worry about changing the range, ranges through the test. If you can't, then try another range to see if you can actually achieve the full range of building test pressures or target pressures before you start the test. This will make things a little bit easier for you. So in this case, we obviously didn't do that successfully, but we were able to get all the data that we needed to. And our final bias pressure, let's say, is 0.3. Now we're going to click, click Calculate, and we'll see all of the same data come through as we did in the prior test. Now if we go down to the bottom, we can see the same table of data that we saw after the first two tests, except instead of saying value here, like it does in this table, it says mean. And this means that it has taken the average of the first direction test and the second direction. So both pressurized and depressurized tests are um, averaged in this result, these set of results. And this is what you'll see on your report, and this is what you would report to your clients. Another thing you'll notice here is the deviation statements. So all of these must say yes in order for the test to pass ASTM standards. So first we tested in both directions, so yes. Our height times temperature difference was less than 1180 and in both, both tests it was 115, so we satisfied that. Our wind speed was less than 4 miles per hour. Our outdoor temperatures were between 45 and 95 Fahrenheit. There were five or more building test pressures used, and we used uh, six in this test. We did take our bias pressures for more than 10 seconds. We did it for, 10, for 20 seconds. And we, as well, we did the building pressures for 20 seconds. Our exponent values, both of them, are between 0.5 and 1, and our correlation coefficient is above 98%, or 0.98. So we've succeeded in completing a full ASTM test, and we have satisfied all of the deviation statements. So now that we've completed a manual test, and we've become a little bit more familiar with the test sheet in Fantastic, we'll move on to run an automatic test.